It is uh, 840. Kat Neville back uh, from the infirmary. She's uh, <laughs> playing a little hurt, though. She'll do well. All sponsored by Jimmy's on the Park, 706 to Munn in Clayton. 725-8585. The website is jimmyscafe.com. He's open Christmas Eve 5 to 9, and they have their Oliver Johnson performing New Year's Eve starting at 830. Congratulations, Jimmy's on the Park. Listen to this. Celebrating their 19th anniversary. Wow. wow. That's incredible. 19 years. I love Jimmy's. And uh, you can go and look for my character on the wall, JC's character, nowhere on the wall. And mine's, <laughs> mine's in a way prominent position than uh, John Carney. Um, Where exactly is it, McGraw? It's placed prominently in the back. <laughs> by the, by the, by the restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> by the restrooms. Uh, well, everybody, you know, probably will walk by it at least. At least, right. exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes. They'll throw some tomato sauce at it. And <laughs> there you go. Jimmy's on the Park. Been uh, your sponsor since the very beginning. That's right. Yeah. The very beginning many, many moons ago. All right. What are we doing today? So today, not restaurants. Today I'm doing two things because um, a lot of times w during the holidays, you want to spend time at home. Mm -hmm. sure. You want to either cook at home or um, make gifts for your friends and family. And I don't know if you've seen the current issue of Feast, but there's a massive lollipop on the cover. Um, we did a feature called Sugar Rush. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people make cookies and fudge and things like this at home, but you can make hard candies as well. Hmm. Yes, you can, um, but you need the right supplies. And so I want to point um, the listeners to where to go to get some of those great supplies. Uh, one is a uh, terrific spot in Edwardsville um, called Chef's Shop, uh, which actually happens to be one of the sponsors of, of Feast TV. But they've got pretty much everything that you need. And then there is also a specialty candy store called Toots Cake and Candy Supplies in Belleville. And they're at 1915 North Belt East. And when you go in, number one, you could very easily drive right by it because it's <laughs> in an old house on the side of the road. So you think that it is going to be like in a strip mall or something like that, but it's in this old house. And so you pull into the um, driveway and walk into the front door, essentially. So and if you, if you miss it, you could be walking into somebody's living room. Well, maybe. Just having breakfast. <laughs> I'm sorry, is this toots? No, <laughs> next, next door. Okay. Right. Um, and it truly is filled with every single type of candy mold you could possibly want, all of the... Um, like paintbrushes and and uh, and you know jars and bottles that you would put you know different types of icings and all that kind of stuff in and um, thermometers and it, everything that you would possibly want to make either chocolate candies or hard candies or anything like that at home for the holidays they have it and the folks are just sweet as pie i suspect people go crazy to do this i mean it'd be awesome to do some of this stuff it's really fun and you know it's one of those things where it if you if you don't ever try if you're afraid of failing get right. over that fear because what's the worst thing that's going to happen it's going to be ugly or it's not going or all the chemistry is not going to work out now one of the things with candy making if you're making hard sugar-based candies whether it's caramel or um, some other type of a candy um, or a jelly or something like that, is that uh, the sugar has to reach an extremely high temperature. You can burn yourself very easily, and so you need to be extremely, extremely careful if you do attempt this. But, you know, that aside, definitely give it a try. And I, over the weekend, um, made candied ginger, and because I, a friend of mine, uh, is in produce and he dropped off like three four pounds of fresh ginger on my porch the other <laughs> week and i was like what in the world Who dropped off ginger on my porch <laughs> right what in the world am i going to do with all of this ginger and so i was like well you know one way to preserve it is to candy it i thought about pickling it but i'm like hey it's christmas time i'm going to candy it and so um Doing something like that also is extremely easy. You just cut your fruit. It could be you're going to candy orange peels or grapefruit peels or ginger, something like that. Cut it really thin and then blanch whatever it is that you're going to be candying in a couple of changes of water. And then you just boil it essentially in a simple syrup, which is uh, equal parts water and sugar, for a couple of hours. And what you end up with not only is candied ginger, but then you also get this syrup, like a ginger syrup or an orange syrup mm. that you can use in cocktails. And so you get two products. Wow. Yeah. 
And so I, I now like have this beer. ginger syrup in my refrigerator along with a ton of candied ginger and it's just so much fun to play with this i had never done it before so once so. the syrup is made you pour it into the mold and then you just let it sit that's and a that's... totally different thing i'm okay. sorry i diverted okay. onto like the idea of things that like when you have this really high drinks heat. and you got all right <laughs> <laughs> with this really high heat of um of, of cooking sugar um but you know so but the idea of uh of making like a caramel or a or a hard candy is yes you you cook sugar to these various temperatures and at e- each level of temperature which is why you need to have that candy thermometer the um the chemistry of the sugar changes so that when it cools down it reaches a different stage of hardness so huh. a caramel will always be slightly soft because you only cook that sugar to a certain point but when you're making a hard candy you cook it to an extremely high temperature where when it does cool down, it hardens. So you're it's telling me that you could go to these places and make homemade candy canes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we have the recipes in the current um, issue of Feast. You know what I like about that also? It, you couldn't have a better Christmas gift than giving something homemade yes. like that. Exactly. Homemade caramels. Yes. Homemade hard candy. Because everybody can so go out nice. and you can spend a couple bucks to buy something, but if you make it yourself and you right. spend the time, yeah. that's made with something love. that... Exactly. Yeah, made with the kids, too. All right, exactly. so you have Chef Shop in Edwardsville yes. and Toots Cake and Candy Supply. Yes, in Belleville, both in Illinois. All right, and let me remind you that to be safe, be careful, and there's yes. no more important rule than to wear these safety glasses while making candy. <laughs> Okay. Sure. Maybe you do need safety glasses. If you want to wear the safety glasses, I would recommend maybe the safety gloves. All right. Safety gloves are important, too, but yeah. safety glasses. Uh, what else you got? Anything else you got? Yes. So the second one that I have, again, also is cooking at home. And um, a lot of times when you... You know, it's the holidays. You're going to have people coming in from out of town. You want to feed them, and you want to feed them well. And so there is a uh, a... a a company in town called Naked Bacon. And I just wanted to say that on the air. Great. And I'm going to say it again. Naked Bacon. Naked Bacon. What is Naked Bacon? Okay, so it is a company actually based, a multi-generation family company in um, based in St. Genevieve, Missouri. Right. And they make bacon, big surprise, and also uh, fresh sausages. And when the reason why they call it Naked Bacon is um, it's made – the way that it would have been made 150 years ago. The the bacon is truly natural. <clears throat> Excuse me. They don't use any nitrates. It's dry cured by hand. They don't add any of the water and all of the stuff that you have in this commercial product. And the flavor is absolutely amazing. It is it, it's very porky, if that makes sense. So when you taste this bacon, it's not just salty and smoky like a lot of the kind of mass-produced bacons. Mm-hmm. It's very thick cut. They have a jalapeno. They have peppered bacon. They have just their standard bacon. Um, and it has – it's just – it's absolutely delicious. They also make these fresh sausages that you can um, – if you know, if you're in the morning, you can cook them up for people that are, that are visiting. But I actually um, made a pasta with it, and I took it out of the casing, which is a natural casing, of course, and just pan-seared it and uh, mixed in, like, some red peppers, a little bit of cream, mm-hmm. and all that kind of good stuff, tossed it with some pasta and some Parmigiano-Reggiano. Delicious. Mm-hmm. And totally natural naked bacon is where okay so it is available retail locations um local harvest of course you're going to get it bob seafood uh ladue market you're also going to get it at stars cacao chocolate bauman's uh jay's international bauman's even. don't 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 just brush past bauman's <laughs> okay bauman's meats is <laughs> charlie will take take care of you over at bauman's you can also get it at bixby's um over at the history museum and global foods um so there's a lot of places where you can pick it up a lot of kind of smaller independent type types of stores but it's definitely worth seeking out the naked bacon if naked you go bacon. to ba- I'm sold on it if you go to Bauman's meats mm-hmm. and you go ask Charlie who's never he sleeps in the back ask Charlie to have you uh, have him make you some of McGraw's uh, wings and then smoke the wings for an hour mm-hmm. oh it is McGraw's wings McGraw's wings he, he did this little rub for me and this this little sauce for me and he mm-hmm. every time I go in I'm like Charlie I need 50 you know of McGraw's wings and he's like okay what what does it taste like what's the characteristic of the rub um I don't know it's just really just good, good. <laughs> they <laughs> just it's just something that makes McGraw happy they gave it to me it, it was their rub it yeah. was their marinade 
I'm just calling it McGraw's. Okay. I have sent in people and... in there and said, tell Charlie to give you what you give McGraw when he asks for his wings. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, Bowman's, by the way, that's on, um, I want to say Brentwood and Manchester there. Uh, oh. Good. All right. Uh, I got 30 seconds. What's going on with the um, the uh, media conglomeration known <laughs> as Beast Magazine? Well, um, obviously, the December issue is out and about, and it is focused on all things kind of a sweets issue is what we're focused on. Right. And next Wednesday, if you want to join me for, the, um, for our – uh, Schnooks Cooks Cooking School class. Yes. I will be there in De Pere, and we will be cooking things up together. We're going to be making Chipino. FeastSTL.com. Mm-hmm. You can get Feast at newsstands everywhere. If you subscribe to the Sunday St. Louis Post-Dispatch, then you can subscribe to Feast, and they'll deliver it right to your front door so you don't have to knock over old ladies at the newsstand. <laughs> And Why do they have to be old? Or young, or young or <laughs> old, men, women. Um, and Stampede. You yeah. can get the McGraw discount on that by going to sdltoday.com. Like the McGraw ribs. Like the McGraw ribs. Cat, be good. Have a good week. I will be good. All right. This is all sponsored by Bertarelli Cutlery. You've been keeping St. Louis sharp since 1967. Bertarelli is your one-stop shop for knife and tool sharpening, along with all of your kitchen supplies. Visit them at 1927 Marconi on the Hill or at BertarelliCutlery.com. We're going to give away Cardinal tickets next on KTRS. I bet you I can make you home.